Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make some penguin valentines. These could be done for any time of year cards, but these specifically are going to be penguin valentines using the valentine penguin set from Gerda Steiner with these cute little guys. They've got lots of love sentiments and stuff, but they also have some year-round ones. So again, I love stamps that you can use any old time and not just restrict them to a holiday. So each one of these I already have on some Mina cardstock. I'm gonna, uh, I have them masked out. I'm gonna mask out some snow along the bottom of each one of them cause they're penguins and just put some snow along the bottom. So I kind of have them planned out in my head where that snow is gonna be. And I didn't have to mask, cut out the masking part on the bottom, but this is the masking tape that I use. It's called the Eclipse Tape. And what I've done is cut out just a section of it that I'm gonna use for my snow. I'll show you how you can get from one cutting, get two different pieces of snow. So I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut as smoothly as I can, just a curve. Yeah, you can die cut this stuff easily. It's super thin. It's almost like, like post-it note sticky stuff, but it's fully sticky on the back. And then I'm just gonna cover up the bottom section of each one of these figuring out where I'm going to put the snow. And I put the horizon line, not under their feet in general, but above their feet. So it looks like they're walking into it. Otherwise it looks like they're balancing on top, except for this guy, cause he's gonna be flying in the air. But the rest of them notice that I'm just kind of sliding it up so that their feet hang down. The thing that I'm using for the background here, this is a 12 by 12 inch thing that's called a, a craft assistant and it washes off really well, which is why I love using it. This is the airbrush that I use and you need both of these pieces. They come in the set when you buy it. You also need the cord. So whatever set you buy, some of them have the cord, some of them don't, that sort of thing. So you need that in the cord and then you need a power source, either an air compressor or canned air. And then you put your Copic marker in it and then you just have to press the little button. That's all you do. It blows across the chisel nib and there you go. Some of them take some adjusting to do and some markers will come out with more color than others. And it's not based on the color itself. It's based on like, is the marker seated exactly properly? Sometimes you can pull it out just a little bit further or twist it at a slightly different angle to get a different amount of color to come out of it. But I'm gonna do all four of mine in a row and just keep switching out the marker. Now you can, keep your markers aside and just keep popping in new markers and just do one. But I figured I'm gonna do all my yellows first and then I'll move on to my pinks, that sort of thing. You may be wondering, Sandy, why are you using Y19? Why not Y17? Well, it's because my Y17 has the little, um, the other nib on it, the little bullet type nib on it, which means that <laughs> it's no longer good for airbrushing. So Y19 is close. So I'm using that one. And now I'm using pink. You may notice if you're somebody who uses a lot of pink, a lot, lot more people are familiar with the pink range. This RV06 is a very dark, well, not, not dark, but it's much more intense color than this. Airbrushing always lightens colors because you're just spraying a light coat of it. You can get it to be really dark eventually, but you can also get them to be very, very light. And for the most part, just trying to choose your colors choose darker colors than you would. If you normally would want it to look like a Y04, then choose a Y08 or something more intense than that because it's always gonna lighten quite a bit. And here I'm trying to get my, my RV06 to work. I was trying to decide how much of it I wanted in there. Did I wanna have another like a purple color flowing through here? Didn't really know, but there's probably tips that you can get from other people on Copic Airbrush on how to make things smoother. I'm not all that good at it. Uh, here I was trying to use an RV69 because I wanted a more intense color, but the RV69 was not putting out color the way I wanted it to. I, I kept adjusting it and twisting the nib and stuff, and I could just get barely enough to come out and that sort of thing. So I proceeded using it, um, but I'm also not all that good at getting the color on there in a real particularly non-lumpy type of way, really smooth. My airbrushing just does not come out that way. 
And a lot of it is just practice. I am out of practice. I haven't used the airbrush very much, but I used it recently and lots of people said they wanted more information about it. So there you go. Here's a little bit more airbrush. There is a Copic airbrush buying guide that I produced a couple of years ago. And I will link to that at the end of this video. If you want to see more about, you know, which kit to buy and which one has what in it and that sort of thing. So I'll link you up to that in case you want to see that after this is all done. And then I don't have to explain it all again. So here I am trying the last bit of the RV69 and I finally gave up on it because it was just not putting out color. I wanted something richer and stronger for these cards and it was just not cutting it. But boy, look, the instant I pulled out my RV29, like I said, some of the markers just put out color and it's all in how it's seated inside that, that different, those different nibs and how they're seated inside the marker. Um, one, of, one of the things I'm looking at is turning them around because when you're aiming the airbrush the direction I am, it's pointed away from my hand, I'm going to get some shadowing from the masks and that's just natural. It's always going to happen. So you want to turn it around so you're pushing the air and the, the pigment in the direction, in the other direction as well. So you don't get those halos. I'll show you at the end what the halos actually look like and a little bit of how I'm planning to fix them on mine. And you, I, there could be other ways to mask that are going to be more firm than this, but for card making and stuff, this eclipse paper is really great. It's simple and it's easy to cut and all that. There are all kinds of masking films where you can use, you put this clear film over the whole thing and you trim it out using an X-Acto knife and all that sort of thing. That's too much work for card making in my mind. I remember doing that in college, but that's just not something that, that I want to mess with. So I just do my paper masks and deal with the fixes later. So I'm adding another layer of the Y19 because I wanted them to be a little warmer than they were getting to be. So you can see, um, there's just a little bit of over, let's, I guess that would be overspray where it went underneath the mask. And here's a place where either my mask wasn't cut out really well, or that was the shadow that was cast so that the, the piece didn't get covered really well. And different ones of them will have different amounts of that, depending on how your mask cutting skills are and mine are not all that good. But on something like this, since I'm using penguins and they're dark images, some of them I'm just gonna go around with my dark marker and I'm gonna add to my penguin, make them just a little bit fatter, give them a little more fur, that kind of thing. So if you're using penguins, <laughs> that is a really good cheat for it. Because otherwise you have to take a marker and try to figure out what combination of colors or what single color is going to fill in that little space that little empty white space. It's generally going to be lighter than you think. So if, if I were to grab that RV69 or the RV29 and try to do that, remember when you put the marker down on the page, it's going to give you a much darker color than airbrushing. So you have to scale back a little bit. So use your pink color, use your orange color, that kind of thing, and don't do any more than you have to. Just barely touch it if you, if you can. So here I'm again using my, my dark color to go over some of those areas instead of trying to use the uh, use a color to try to fill that in. Because in the middle of all that airbrushing, you get a really nice texture there. If you start making strokes within that area, you're gonna see them. They're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So it's gonna be a lot easier to do it otherwise um, and try to try to get your image to cover it up. Now on the balloon up there, I'm going to have to fix it because I don't have any black image unless I wanted to make a black balloon. So I use the orange to try to make that, that outside edge disappear. And a lot of it's just going to be a matter of hiding it a little bit. Most people aren't going to see it. They're not going to care. It's not going to make any difference to them. And so I'm just going to use a couple of yellows and oranges to try to make my balloon look a little bit realistic. But for the most part, that background is what people will be looking at when they see the card because they're going to be like, wow, an intense color. It's so gorgeous. So the shading and everything on the rest of it is not as important as that beautiful background. So even if it's not perfect, and I do complain 
at myself when my backgrounds don't come out perfect. Uh, they are really powerful because of the bright color. So he's got a little shadow floating down, down there below him. And now we're on to this little penguin holding an envelope. And I like that the penguins in this set, they you could replace that envelope with something, but he's already holding it. So you don't have to mask it out and put something in his hands. Uh, sometimes I like those sets so I can put all different kinds of things in the critter's hands. But in this particular case, it was kind of nice to be able to just have it done for me and make it really simple. Because once I got going on the cards, once I had all the stamping done, you saw how quickly the airbrushing went. I, it was sped up, but it goes really fast and it gives you a big pow impact on the card and without a whole lot of extra work. And some people have asked if I would do an airbrush class, but literally this is as much as I know about airbrush. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to teach. So maybe at some point, if I find some some really cool tricks and tips, I'll do an airbrush class. I do have Copic classes in my art-classes.com website, so you can check those out with the links listed in the doobly-doo down below. But right now, there's no airbrush in there because I don't know what to do. I can barely do a background like this myself, and it's all good. If you don't have a Copic airbrush, by the way, you can do this with Distress Inks. And there are plenty of videos on how you can do skies and gradations and stuff with Distress Inks, too. Do them the same kind of way, just make yourself masks and color away. And I want to give a big shout out to Gerda Steiner and all the companies that make stamp sets and think about giving us something that we can use any time of year. I love that because I like to get more use out of things rather than just buying them for Valentine's and never using them again. You can use these for get well cards, birthday cards, all different kinds of fun things. I popped the panels up on a black cardstock card base and I just drew little hearts on the bottom. That was all I did, just trim off that little bit so I have some room to draw them and called it done. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button. It means a lot to my heart to see more likes show up because then I know you actually enjoy what you're seeing and I can make more of it. And I will see you guys again next time. Subscribe so you get the next video. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.